Cedar Point opened 153 years ago, dating all the way back to just a few years after the Civil War, 1870. Located in Sandusky, Ohio, on a peninsula jutting out into Lake Erie, this was a popular beach destination, fishing spot, and ultimately a major economic hub. Sandusky was home to a shipping harbor and two railroads, and the area was built up quickly. In the 1890s, it would transform itself from a picnic ground to an amusement park. Their first coaster was a switchback railway, opening in 1892, and this was the first of 35 coasters that would operate on the land. So many of these are old. They operated for 7 to 25 years in the early 20th century, and there's not too much to them, nor is there much known about them. I like to rank every coaster that ever operated at these major parks, but for Cedar Point, I have to do something different. Their oldest operating coaster is Blue Streak, opening in 1964, so let's consider that the start of the modern era. Let's look at all the coasters that have come and gone since Blue Streak opened and stack them against each other. These are the modern coasters of Cedar Point, past and present, ranked from worst to best. Just a note, I've been to Cedar Point seven times, my first visit coming in 2002 and my last in 2021, so I've ridden most of these, but not all of them. For those I haven't ridden, I've ridden similar coasters or exact clones at other parks, so I'll use those experiences to rank them up. Number 24, Wilderness Run, an Intamin children's coaster, opened in 1979. After Gemini made its grand debut just across the pathway, Cedar Point decided to build a kid's version of the ride. They hired Intamin to build their first roller coaster, a 19-foot-tall, 443-foot-long, 6-mile-an-hour coaster with a figure-eight layout, just like Gemini. This would have the appropriate name, Junior Gemini. This is the smallest coaster in the park, the only one that adults can't ride without a kid, and it's a great coaster for beginners. In 2014, this adopted its new name, Wilderness Run, fitting in with the Camp Snoopy area of the park. Number 23, Woodstock Express, a Vacoma Junior Coaster, opened in 1999. For as many coasters Vacoma has opened over the last 40 years, this is the only one that landed at Cedar Point, just across the path from Wilderness Run. This is a step up from a kid's coaster to a family coaster. 43 feet tall, 1,100 feet of track, 28 miles per hour. This is a common model as a mid-sized, compact coaster the whole family can enjoy. Number 22, Broadway Trip, a mock rides indoor coaster, opened in 1964, closed in 1964. Just barely making the cut is this small steel coaster. Built partially inside a building, this came from Fun Forest Amusement Park in Seattle, making it the only modern coaster in the park to be relocated. After just one season, it was moved to Palisades Amusement Park in New Jersey, and moved three more times before landing back in New Jersey at Casino Pier. That was where it was known as Wizard's Cavern until 2003. Now, Casino Pier has Pirate's Hideaway, and that looks very similar, even though that was built by Wisdom Rides and not Mock, and that ride is pretty bad. If you rode this at Cedar Point, you have an extremely rare credit, but hopefully, some of you got to ride it during its 17 years at Casino Pier. Number 21, Corkscrew, an aerodynamics looper, opened in 1976. Had this opened a week earlier, this would have been the first modern coaster with a vertical loop, but Revolution barely beat it out. Still, when this opened 47 years ago, it was the first coaster to turn riders upside down three times, doing this with just over 2,000 feet of track, rising up 85 feet and dropping riders into an airtime hill, a vertical loop. Then, a big swooping turnaround in the final two corkscrews, placed right above the midway. It's a beautiful ride, but I've never enjoyed the ride experience. I always thought it was jerky and not comfortable, but at least it's historic and nice to look at. Number 20, Cedar Creek Mine Ride, an aerodynamics mine train, opened in 1969. Aero came out with their first mine train in 1966, and it didn't take long for Cedar Point to dive in. Being on a peninsula, Cedar Point doesn't have the same terrain as other parks, and that's where these mine train coasters really thrive. This is built with big wood supports, rising up 48 feet tall, maxing out at 42 miles per hour, covering over 2,500 feet of track with two lift hills. This is a very mild ride that does a lot of meandering, but it has some exciting moments, like the drop over the lake that leads into an upward helix, and the grand helix finale. Number 19, Iron Dragon, an aerodynamic suspended coaster, opened in 1987. As the suspended coaster emerged in the mid-80s, Cedar Point finally got on board in 1987, this being a very family-friendly version of the model. Hanging under the track, this ride goes up a 76-foot lift, and the first half winds around the trees. Then it hits the second lift and drops down over a lake, swooping around a fountain. Sometimes it has fog effects. 
From a thrill seeker's point of view, you'll find much more exciting suspended coasters around the country, like Magic Mountain and Kings Island, but Iron Dragon serves as an excellent family coaster. Number 18, Wild Mouse, a Zamperla Twister Coaster, opening in 2023. Here I have to project. This coaster isn't open yet, and it's the only freeform twister coaster in the world. When you think of a spinning mouse, you get the idea in your head. Lots of switchbacks. The train is unlocked and starts spinning about halfway through, but this doesn't look like that. This seems more like a Maurer spinner, and those are very solid rides. For a family coaster, this looks pretty good. Kind of a modern take on a wild mouse. No dead moments on the ride. It's kind of short at 1300 feet, but for its footprint and if it spins enough, that should be good enough for this to be a good ride. Number 17, Rougarou, a B&M Flores coaster, opened in 1996. This was announced as Banshee, but the park got negative feedback on the name. Some thought it was too grim, so it was changed to Mantis before the grand opening. This opened at the height of the stand-up coaster craze, and this was state-of-the-art. The tallest, longest, and fastest stand-up coaster in the world. 145 feet tall, a 137-foot straight drop, 60 miles per hour, 3,900 feet of track and four inversions, all done on a small plot of land partially over a lake. Over time, a trim brake was applied to the first drop to lessen the G-forces. Stand-up coasters fell out of favor over the next two decades, and the ride went through an overhaul for the 2015 season, giving it Florida's trains and a new name. Rougarou. I despise this coaster as Mantis, and as Rougarou, it's just okay. Pretty smooth, pretty long, but lacking that one standout element. Number 16, Mean Streak, a Din Wooden Coaster, opened in 1991, closed in 2016. Even though this ride fizzled out and became an afterthought, when it opened, it was a big deal. 161 feet tall, 155 foot drop, 65 mile an hour top speed, and well over a mile of track. This was part of the era of giant wooden coasters back in the late 80s and early 90s. Located in the back of the park in Frontier Town and wrapping around itself, this ride gained a bad reputation of being rough and boring, but I never thought it was that rough. In 2002, I said it was very intense and relatively smooth. By 2016, it was much more bouncy but still not painful. Even though it was big, its elements were very drawn out and it wasn't very exciting. So that's why this behemoth of a wooden coaster is ranked so low. It was closed down in favor of RMC after the 2016 season, the nearly two-year renovation producing Steel Vengeance in 2018. Number 15, Jumbo Jet, a Schwarzkopf Jetstar, opened in 1972, closed in 1978. These portable Schwarzkopf coasters were everywhere in the 70s, and this isn't the only one that operated at Cedar Point. Only seven of these Jumbo Jets were built. We talked about one of them last month at Busch Gardens Williamsburg, Glissade. These had two car trains, rising up the spiral lift, diving down and wrapping around the small footprint. After leaving Cedar Point in 1978, it went to five other parks, landing at a park in Belarus where it's been operating since 2015. I go back to my experience with Jetstar 2 at Lagoon, similar but different with one car instead of two, and I really enjoyed it for its low to the ground moments and intensity. I can only imagine this was the same. Number 14, Wildcat, a Schwarzkopf Wildcat, opened in 1970, closed in 1978. This was another very common model in the 70s, this one being the 65 meter version, and it's defined by big drops and long turns, finishing with the helix. This moved to Valley Fair after leaving Cedar Point, and then it landed at Jolly Roger Amusement Park in Maryland, being put in storage in 2001, but being rebuilt in the same park 14 years later, where it still operates today. Number 13, Wildcat, a Schwarzkopf Wildcat, opened in 1979, closed in 2011. They sent their Wildcat to Valley Fair after the 1978 season, and then they opened the same exact model with the same exact name the next year. This operated in three different locations in the park during its 32-year run, and I was able to ride this a few times before it was taken out. I really enjoy these coasters whenever I can get on them. They're great, family-friendly rides that run smooth and offer some thrill. This one was not relocated. It was scrapped to expand Celebration Plaza. Number 11. Wicked Twister, an intimate impulse coaster, opened in 2002, closed in 2021. It's hard to believe this was the big new coaster the first time I went to Cedar Point in 2002, and now it's gone. This was added at the tail end of the impulse craze, this one bigger than the rest in classic Cedar Point fashion. 216 feet tall on each spike, 72 mile an hour top speed, and unlike the rest, this had a twisted back spike, one of the coolest moments to experience in the back row. These are fun basic rides, but just misses the top 10 in this loaded park. Number 10, Blue Streak, a PTC wooden coaster, opened in 1964. Well, here it is, the coaster that inspired this whole list. And to this day, it's still a great ride. 78 feet tall, 72 foot drop, a very basic out and back layout covering 2,500 feet. 
I love this because it runs pretty smooth after almost 60 years. And this has good airtime, going out and coming back. This is Cedar Point's only remaining wooden coaster and I hope they keep it around. Number 9. Gatekeeper, a B&M wing coaster, opened in 2013. When the park tore out Disaster Transport, they added their first new coaster in 6 years. This came with a brand new park entrance, and they designed that new coaster to cross over the front gate, using the very appropriate name, Gatekeeper. The B&M wing coaster was still new at the time, making its debut two years prior and coming to America the year before, but this one would be a monster. 170 feet tall, 67 mile an hour top speed, 6 inversions, over 4100 feet of track starting on the beach, coming all the way to the front gate and back, crossing through keyholes that serve as near miss elements. It's not a very intense ride, but it's very smooth and very fast. I enjoy it, but I don't love it. I think it looks better than it rides. Number 8. Valraven, a B&M dive coaster, opened in 2016. Three years after Gatekeeper, Cedar Point was ready to break another record. This would be the world's tallest dive coaster, standing 223 feet tall with a 214 foot drop, reaching a top speed of 75 miles an hour, almost 3,500 feet of track and three inversions. It has a medieval theme, and its whole layout is right over the footpaths. This gets a lot of hate, not only for being forceless, but also for having best restraints. These eliminate the airtime you get on other dive coasters. Still, I've almost always had great rides on Valraven, and I defend this ride as being pure fun, from the two vertical drops to the slow zero-g roll at the end. Number 7. Gemini, an aerodynamics hybrid, opened in 1978. This was such an impressive ride when it opened 45 years ago. It mirrored the big racing wooden coasters of its time, but this ran on steel rails. That made for an entirely different ride experience. It's smooth, it's a long ride, it has great airtime, it stands 125 feet tall, hits 60 miles per hour, covers almost 4,000 feet of track, and Cedar Point almost always has these racing, at least from what I've seen. The ride feels kind of outdated, but in my opinion, it's in a good way. Sometimes you just want a ride that gives some good janky fun, and Gemini does that. Number 6. Top Thrill Dragster, an intimate accelerator, opened in 2003. For almost 20 years, Dragster was one of those bucketless experiences. 0 to 120 miles an hour in 4 seconds, rising up 420 feet and spiraling down. This was the world's tallest and fastest coaster, and will always be the first full circuit coaster that topped the 400 foot mark. It uses a hydraulic launch to achieve its speed, but that's caused maintenance issues over the years. It's been closed since 2001 as it receives a major overhaul, possibly a layout change, probably a change to the launch system, and we'll see if that makes this rise up the list or fall back down. We'll find out in 2024. Number 5. Raptor, a B&M invert, opened in 1994. Cedar Point likes to get new models, but not the prototypes. They like to wait a couple years and then get the biggest and best one. They did that with Raptor, the B&M invert being 2 years old and small scale at the time, and they build this one at 137 feet, almost 3800 feet of track and 6 inversions, maxing out at 57 miles an hour. This is one of the first coasters you see when you enter the park, riding alongside the midway. And to me, this is one of the most intense inverts out there. People complain about its roughness, but I don't see the problem. I seem to like it more every time I ride it. It has those big inversions to start, and low to the ground core screws and helices at the end, keeping its speed and intensity. 29 years later, it's easily a top 3 invert in the country. Number 4. Maverick, an Intamin Blitz Coaster, opened in 2007. Maverick isn't only a great ride, it marked the end of an era. For the last 20 years, everyone was racing to break records. Biggest, fastest, longest. Maverick was built as an elite coaster, but it's not very big. It's only 105 feet tall, a big departure from the 200, 300, 400 footers that Cedar Point got used to. It's what Maverick does with this layout that makes it great. And after this, manufacturers would start focusing on great elements instead of great stats. It starts with an LSM lift hill, a 95 degree drop that tosses you out of your seat, into some intense switchbacks, airtime hills, two inversions, and a mid-course powerful launch up to 70 miles per hour. It had a third inversion that had to be removed before it opened to the public, just putting too much stress on the track and the train. In the end, it covers over 4,400 feet of track while staying lower to the ground. I would like this better if it had less bulky restraints, but the ride itself is top notch. Number 3. Millennium Force, an Intamin Giga, opened in 2000. Cedar Point broke the internet with this announcement back in 99. Not only was this the first coaster with a 300 foot drop, it also just looked different from any other coaster. It would be the first time that Intamin would use a cable lift, reducing the weight that a lift chain would carry, and it would zip the train up the lift at a much greater speed. And speaking of speed, that would be this ride's main focus. It was one of the longest coasters in the world at almost 6,600 feet, going over airtime hills and overbanks as it shot over the rivers and onto its own island. 
The ride does leave something to be desired, focusing too much on overbanks, but I've enjoyed almost every ride that I've gotten on it. It was once my number two overall coaster and still holds a spot in my top 30. This is a top three iconic coaster in America. Number two, Magnum XL200, an aerodynamics hyper, opened in 1989. Millennium Force was the first 300-foot coaster, and 11 years prior, this opened as the first 200-foot coaster. This ride is super polarizing. I have it up at number 2, but some people wouldn't even have it in their top 10. Others would say it's one of the worst coasters they've ever ridden. I understand that. This ride is violent and not everyone loves getting beat up, but for me, it's violent in all the best ways. Being a 34-year-old coaster designed by Arrow, you aren't going to get the best transitions. When it dives down its 195-foot drop and hits 72 miles an hour, it can be a little jarring, but this has airtime right off the bat, all the way to the end of its 5,100 feet of track. The best airtime, of course, comes on the finale, a series of sharp airtime hills, thrusting your whole body into the lap bar, some of the most intense airtime you'll find anywhere. I could seriously ride this all day. Number 1. Steel Vengeance, an RMC Hyper Hybrid, opened in 2018. No surprise here, I mentioned Cedar Point likes to wait on new models and get the best, and they definitely waited for Steel Vengeance. RMC had been converting old wooden coasters for 5 years before Cedar Point made their move, shutting down Mean Streak at the end of the 2016 season, and RMC got to work. They worked all the way through 2017, making the ultimate roller coaster. They had a lot to work with in Mean Streak, but they added an extra 40 feet on top of that lift hill, topping out at 205 feet, giving it a 90 degree drop, over 5,700 feet of track as it wraps around its course three times, and had the hybrid record at the time of four inversions. It would also hold the record for most airtime in any coaster. For me, this ride combines all the best attributes of a coaster. Height, length, speed, airtime, and whip. It's my number one overall coaster and it's going to be hard to top. So there you have it, the 24 coasters in the modern history of Cedar Point. Unfortunately, leaving off the other 11 that opened before Blue Streak in 1964. Let me know where you agree or disagree. I'm sure there will be very strong opinions on this one. Rougarou being too low, Millennium Force and Magnum being too high, disrespecting Dragster and Maverick. Everyone has strong opinions on Cedar Point, so let me hear them in the comments below. Before you leave, don't forget to drop a like. And if you're new here and love coasters, please give me a sub. Also, check out my links below for my Discord server, and my second channel where I post copyright free off ride footage, and my baseball channel if you're in full on baseball mode like I am. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.